Do you love a savory breakfast like I do? I'm going to show you three different recipes that are loaded with deliciousness and one of them isn't savory. This is actually shocking because I don't usually go for anything that's not savory, especially in the morning. But one of these recipes that I'm going to show you, I'm actually craving it and I need to make it two to three times a week. This is not the type of breakfast I grew up eating in my Finnish family. I would eat oatmeal, which we call porridge or cream of wheat. I don't know, have you ever had cream of wheat? We had letut, which are pancakes, and that was, a, that was a treat. And then the other thing we grew up eating and I still love is rye bread in the morning with a slice of cheese and some cucumber slices or a slice of deli meat with some cucumber pickle slices. That's what we had for breakfast. And I do still, like I said, love my rye bread. But I avoided oatmeal like the plague for years because I ate it so much growing up. So I could not stomach it until now. These breakfasts that I'm gonna show you are my versions on three YouTube chefs. I have made all of these recipes and I love all of these three different channels and I wanted to make sure you know about them because I have made so many good recipes from all of their uh, sites. Whether you eat plant-based or not, you're gonna love these recipes. My husband is not vegan or 100% plant-based at all, but he loves this breakfast sandwich I'm gonna show you. They all have excellent nutrients in them that your body really needs. And because if you're eating more plants, you're getting more fiber, which is so important for your health. I went all in on eating plant-based when I was in my forties because my aunt who was only in her fifties was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. So my mom, her two sisters and my grandfather all passed away from Alzheimer's disease. And even though I was a nurse, I couldn't get any information to help me with this and to the, for the prevention of it. So I did my own research and I decided I was going to go plant-based because that's what I thought at the time and what I read would be the best thing for me. I've learned a lot since then. I'm 59 now and my views on prevention of Alzheimer's disease and other diseases has changed a little bit based on science, but I still am plant-based and I st still love really delicious food and comfort food. Now let's get on with the first breakfast, which is a delicious breakfast sandwich. And I will see you in a little bit to show you a delicious and super savory breakfast that's inspired by the Young Man Cooking Channel. So see you in a little while. I know they say to not wash your mushrooms, but I always do. And cause I just don't think that just brushing them off with some paper or a little, one of those little mushroom brushes is enough. I don't know. I've never had a problem. I'd still do this. I have been craving this uh, for a while now. I've made them twice and you know, breakfast is one of my favorite meals. I'd love it. I look forward to it. I'm going to share with you um, some breakfasts that I'm really enjoying. And I have found these guys on YouTube. Well, one of them is just a well-known. I've made a lot of the recipes. Yeah, this is the only recipe of his I've made. I've watched his videos and there's a bunch I want to make. So I'm going to add some tarragon. He didn't use this. I don't know if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I, I watch recipes, but then I do my own thing. And a lot of the time it's because I don't have all the ingredients. Pepper. I've got some coarse salt. Oh, that's too much. Um, I don't have all the ingredients or sometimes I just want, I don't like a certain thing or I, usually fennel seeds. Usually I just um, also um, not lazy, but I try to do different things, kind of what I'm craving. And then the other thing he added was he did add 
smoked paprika. So I'm definitely adding that. And basically what we're supposed to be doing here is getting some of the moisture out of the mushrooms. And also I have always, you know, I never order a mushroom or portobello um, burger because I find them too tough. Every time I bite into a burger that's got portobello mushroom, the whole thing slides out because I can't bite through it. It's chewy. So he said if you kind of pre-cook them like this, draw out the moisture, start softening them up, and then you add the spices and let them marinate, it will make them more tender and obviously the spices will um, flavor the mushrooms more. I don't know why I got myself such a tiny mortar and pestle, but I thought it was so cute. I guess I just liked it because it was a wooden one and I didn't think I'd need it that often. But these fennel seeds, you really got to grind them down. One of these is a lot smaller than the other one. Then you marinate them. The longer you mar marinate them, the more flavor they will have. I've had this breakfast sandwich twice already. Once I made it for myself and Keith, and then I had it by myself one time. And I've just been looking forward to it. Also want to introduce you to these three people that are I call them chefs. I don't know if that's actually what they are or not, but they make incredible food and they um, are really good at promoting and in, uh, including a lot of plant-based foods in the recipes. So if you ha hopefully um, you'll find at least one of them interesting. And the last one, this one that I'm copying right now, the, um, his name is Derek Samo or Samos, Samos. I'll put the link in the description, but I just recently discovered his um, channel and everything looks really good. It looks really good, like comfort food. I can't wait to make some of the other things that I've seen on his channel. And definitely this one, like I said, I've tried and love. So we gotta try it. And then I'll show you the other one. So I'm gonna let this sit and I also don't have English muffins, nor do I have vegan cheese to put in there, but I've got something that I, I think it's a smoked Gouda, like a soft spreadable plant-based cheese. I'm just gonna spread that on my bun, which is just a ciabatta type bun. This is just about making do, getting inspiration from these really great um, cooks and chefs and following the recipes to, the, you know, to give you ideas and then adapting to what you have and your preferences. So I can't wait to eat this. I'm just using extra firm tofu and this is what I was saying I had. Nuts, cheese, uh, smoky gouda, nuts for cheese. Because I don't have any cheese slices that are plant-based here. So we'll see how this works. I just store my leftover tofu in a container like this. Put it back in the fridge because I, I use it up pretty quick. So. Now what did he put in there? Was it all olive oil? I'll put just a little bit of olive oil in the pan again. This is what I'm using. It's like a sunflower seed ciabatta bun. And he said, to make it like a restaurant one, you have to butter the English muffin. In this case, the bun. So, and then you heat that up. I'm gonna use only one of these mushrooms right now. The other one I'm gonna put in the fridge for another time. 
but it's already you know prepped so you just have to basically heat up and assemble everything So again with the granulated onion onto the tofu and black salt. And the black salt to give it that eggy flavor. All right. So I really I find that you have to cook the tofu a lot longer, be, and not the tofu. I find that you really have to cook the mushroom longer, otherwise it's tough and you can't bite through it. And when I made it the other time, it was very spicy because I added um, spices like he did, but I don't like it spicy, so I, I left that out. This was so good with the melted cheese on it, but let's see how it'll taste with this. Do you guys like uh, savory or sweet breakfasts? I prefer savory, but the other one of the other breakfasts that I'm going to show you Oh my gosh, I have become addicted to it. I basically crave it now. And it's not savory. And it's nice because uh, it includes oats. So I'm happy to be eating oats because oats are really good. Especially for me, making sure that you're getting your fiber helps uh, decrease cholesterol levels. All that good stuff. So I'm really happy that I found a recipe that I actually really, really enjoy and look forward to eating. Except for um, marinating the mushrooms for a while, and you don't even have to do it very long. It is super fast recipe. And like I, my husband liked it too, so. All right, maybe because this is supposed to be like the sausage patty, I'll put it on the ketchup side. And then what he did, which I didn't do, is you'd have the, uh, the cheese slice melting over the tofu and he put a lid on it. I did, I've done that too and it works good. Okay, let's check it out. I've given this a minute to cool because I don't want to burn myself. And I know they're good because this is my third one. So in less than a month, probably in the last three weeks. Okay, let me get a big bite. Mmm. This is good. Ah! Beware. The portobello mushrooms are juicy. Mmm. Mmm. The um, smoked gouda, because I later put it on quite thick, is really good in there. Now that I've had it with a melted cheese slice on this, it's good. I do like it not spicy, which is me. And I like ketchup in it because it adds the sweetness to all the smokiness and everything else. Mm. Oh, this is such a good breakfast. Definitely try it out if you're like me and like savory breakfast. Highly recommend. And try following his, his recipe exactly because it's got to be exceptional. This one I happen to have a little bit more bread, bun versus um, tofu, but that's okay. Because when you watch his video, you'll see that he uses just the, basically, what does he use? A half a slab of tofu or at least a quarter of it, each slice. And he uses English muffins, so. All right, I'll see you at the next breakfast. Good morning. It's another breakfast and I'm hungry. So the bircher, 
actually is a little bit thicker because I had it more than overnight in the fridge. Sometimes when I add that much of the uh, soy milk, it's a little bit runny, so you have to let it thicken for a bit, or you add more chia seeds or oats. I make this, and depending on how hungry I am, it lasts me two breakfasts or three breakfasts. I just divide it out. I can't believe that I'm finally craving oatmeal again. And I'll definitely put Jamie Oliver's version, his, his recipe uh, link in the description because if you look at that, it gives you inspiration to make anything. And like I've said before, I don't have all the ingredients that they always use. So I kind of adopt the recipes to what I have and what I like. Hmm. I don't know what it is about this because Keith makes breakfast and he always dices up apples and puts raisins in his cooked oatmeal and yet it's not the same as this. This is so good and creamy and delicious. That's my stomach growling. It's morning here. The sun is shining in through my windows and all I can see is the filthy windows there. I'm going to have a little bit to eat because I'm going to work out. If you haven't tried Bircher, give it a try because I, it's a little bit different than just um, overnight oats. And I actually prefer it a lot more than overnight oats. I've tried that too and it didn't, didn't do anything for me. So it's an option. I'll also l link um, the description of what Bircher is because I had no idea. So I'll put a link to what I found online about it, okay? So let me go and enjoy my breakfast now. This one is from the Young Man Cooking Channel. I have made so many things from his uh, channel that are everything tastes so good. And I love the way he explains things. It's a really good cooking channel if you want to learn something. So I made this dish for dinner uh, a while back. And like with anything, <laughs> I had leftovers. So. The next morning, I combined a couple of the things that I had in the fridge, and it was so good. And this was a, a rice, bean and rice dish. So you'll see when you look at, if you watch his channel and watch him make it, the differences. I, like I've said in the other, you know, the other breakfast, that I don't like my breakfast, well, I don't actually like things too spicy. <laughs> Very rarely do I want something super spicy. So this one, um, I left out a few things and I, uh, and I just don't have some of the stuff that he uses. So I've heated up a pan with just some olive oil. So just so, when you're checking it out, this is my version based on, you know, me following his recipe. Not exactly because I didn't, like I said, I didn't have all the ingredients, but I'm hoping to show you from here how you don't have to stick, stick to the rules and just um, do what works for you. And I'm not here to, you know, say do it like this or anything, but I love watching cooking shows because it gives me inspiration and that's all I really want to do. I remember when I was young, I had no idea. We didn't have YouTube. I, had, I looked at like magazines for recipe ideas and things like that. I've never used king oyster mushrooms either. I wasn't really sure how to use them, but I've learned a lot since my daughter-in-law became part of the family. So I've learned a lot about different foods, different spices and just different cooking techniques. And it's so interesting. I knew none of this stuff. Gosh, I feel bad. I remember inviting my husband for dinner when we were dating and 
I think I just bought packaged stuff that you kind of had to rehydrate or, you know, mix a few things together, but I had no idea about cooking. Like, not a lot. Like, I did the basic things that my mom made. That was about it. So I just, I actually just wash these mushrooms and then I'm just chopping them up. Kind of like he did, dicing them up into squares. And this mushroom is actually nice tasting. It's a little bit chewy, like it tastes, um, oops. it tastes, tastes good, but it also has a bit of texture and bite to it, which is nice. This is a trick I do is um, I never use all my ginger. I always have leftovers. I, I wash it and maybe cut off any really bad parts to it and then I use what I need and the rest I freeze. It's so easy to grate when it's frozen. So that's all I do. If you like having like bites of ginger, then you can just, when it's fresh and don't freeze it, you can just chop it up. But I like ginger, I like what it does as a spice, but I don't necessarily like biting into it. And I grate it skin and all. I'm going to add a bit more. Let's see how easy it is. Then I'm just going to add in some garlic. You gotta be careful now that you don't burn that. This is super fast to make uh, when you're just cooking and you're not talking <laughs> and trying to explain it. Then I've just got a can of black beans. I'm just gonna throw these into the pan. So it's like basically like this. It's nothing too fancy yet. But what we're going to do is make it saucy. He added some vegetable stock, which is good. So I'm adding that. Then I'm going to add some dark soy sauce. I found this in our local um, like uh, grocery store. I think it's for the color. It's a darker, even to me. It almost looks a little bit thicker. Maybe it adds a different depth of flavor, but dark soy sauce. So I'm just adding a little bit of that. It, it is very dark, so it will add color to it. And then just regular soy sauce or tamari. You're gonna let that simmer for a little bit. And he also added um, some of his chili oils. I don't have any of that, but I have the Korean hot pepper paste. Now I'm gonna butcher it, so I'm not even gonna try to say it. I'll put it on the screen here, what it's called. Gojing. I can't say it. So I just add a little bit of this. This adds the heat and spice. But because it's, I'm having this for breakfast, I am not gonna add a lot to it. Honestly, I just have to kind of play it by ear because I'm not sure that, you know, this is about how much I would use or a bit more if I'm making a dinner thing. But I think I'm actually gonna take a little bit less of that. And then I'll put this in. This reminded me of a Mexican breakfast that I loved, which was with beans and salsa and eggs, huevos, rancheros. But I used to love that for breakfast. This reminds me of it. The only other thing we're gonna add to it is to thicken the sauce. You make a slurry with cornstarch or whatever, potato starch, whatever starch you like, and a little bit of cold water, put it in. So I'm gonna add that in after it comes to a bit of a simmer and then, um, It'll be some green onions to top it off. For the eggy part of this, I'm using extra firm tofu. And what we're gonna do is exactly what we did in the first recipe when we were making the breakfast sandwich. You're going to take a slab or two of the extra firm tofu, slice it up and pan fry it with the black salt and the onion powder, garlic powder, whatever you want for spices, and have it with this bean 
mixture and it is so delicious. I tell you, this was a happy mistake when I had the leftovers from this. We had it with rice and it was really delicious. So I'm taking a half of the slab, I'll save the other half, cutting it in half and I'm gonna fry these up. All right, so you just put the tofu into the hot pan. To this, I am only gonna add just some uh, granulated onion powder and also the black salt, aka Kalamanac. And I got this huge bag of it on line and then I just put it into a jar so it lasts better. Don't add too much of this because it is salt, but it also gives that eggy taste because of the sulfur. So I'm just gonna let those sear a bit and then flip them over and that'll be done. In the meantime, look at this bean mixture. I'm gonna turn up the heat. I'm gonna add the slurry that I made because I want this to thicken up so that it's not just a soup, but a actually saucy uh, beans and mushrooms to eat with uh, tofu. I'm just gonna add some uh, green onion like he did, which is nice because it does add a little bit of greenness to it, otherwise it's so brown. And then it does taste a bit fresher when you have something. You could probably even use parsley and that would be nice. So that part of it's done. Now I'll add some of the granulated onion powder to this side too, along with some of the black salt and that's it. So there's my egg and there is the dish. Now you have to try this. This was such a happy accident. The dinner was really, really good with the rice and then having it with the eggy tofu that uh, Derek Sarno made for the breakfast sandwich. And this combined, I tell you, it does give you the kind of similar vibes that Huevos Rancheros <laughs> gives you because it's good, it's so delicious. Mm. I think I ate it with a spoon last time just so I can get all the sauce in because you lose so much when you're having it with a fork. It's so good. You just have to be careful about um, the soy sauces. So notice that I didn't put any salt and pepper on the, in the bean mix because you're gonna get all the sodium from the soy sauces. And then because I added that Korean um, chili paste, that has a lot of flavor. And then of course, um, also depending on the vegetable stock you use, that can have a lot of salt and different things in it too. So don't add too much of anything because it can be too much, overpowering, too salty. So be really careful of that. But this is really flavorful. And if you don't have green onions, you could try any kind of a herb like parsley or even cilantro on it. Just, just experiment and have fun with it. Mm. Sorry, I could keep eating. I'm hungry right now and it tastes really good. I hope these gave you some breakfast ideas because I was shocked about the bircher. I was telling the people at work that I can't believe I'm eating oats right now because it was the one thing. It was like I was forcing myself to try different versions of oatmeal to eat. And it's nothing like overnight oats to me. And I'm shocked that I love it with the apple bits, either grated or diced in there. So good. So let me know in the comments if you've tried any of these or if you like any of them or if you're gonna try them. I'd love to know your thoughts. I have a newsletter if you'd like to sign up for it. I'll have a link in the description. And otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.